Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Yes, I am aware that there are Halloween decorations in the background. I put them up yesterday. I know it's only mid-August. Uh, I make no apologies. It was very therapeutic. I highly, highly recommend that if you are a big fan of Halloween that you go ahead and put your Halloween decorations up as early as your heart desires because yeah, I had a good day yesterday. Also, this wire right here is incredibly distracting and it's bothering me. Uh, it is on my to-do list to get that covered up. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do another reading from the Morrigan here today, another messages from the Morrigan video. Um, as always, I've got my crow tarot deck. I've also got some little puppies running around. So if you hear any pitter patter of feet, that's what's happening there. You wanna say hi? I got him. I got him. I don't know if I ever formally introduced uh, Pipsqueak. This is Pipsqueak. He is my Yorkie. He is, how old are you? Three? Yeah, he's three. Um, he's adorable. He screams at absolutely everything. Um, I have to pause my videos about 12 times uh, until he stops barking. Yeah, you were talking to little boy. What do you got on your mouth? Okay. I'll give you freedom. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. Um, I know it's been a couple weeks since I've done one of these, and just so you guys know, like I, <laughs> I don't fully control when these videos happen. In fact, I just sat down a moment ago and tried to film a, a different video on a different topic that I have strong opinions on, and every sentence that I tried to start just didn't feel right. And usually um, when I sit down to make a video, and I have something that I wanna talk about, but then I just can't find the words. Usually what that means is the Morgan give me, gave me the inspiration and the desire to sit down and film because she wants me to do one of these readings. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just jump right into it. I also did wanna mention, so a couple of weeks ago, we had a new moon in Leo and that coincided with something that's called Lionsgate. Now, I'm not an astrologer. Um, honestly, this was my first year hearing about Lionsgate, so I'm pretty new to the concept of that. And I really wasn't gonna touch on that at all, but I will say that it is undeniable that something really impacted me during that new moon. Yeah, I always do um, new moon rituals on every new moon. It is part of my contract with the Morrigan. Um, but this past new moon, oh man, I, uh, I don't wanna get into it too deeply in, in this video because this is what I was gonna talk about in that other video that I just mentioned I failed miserably at making a few minutes ago, but I was hit with the most intense energy that I've ever felt during a ritual. And I can only describe it as just spiritual rage. Um, and I mean, it, it, it flowed through me. I, I have never felt, more powerful is the wrong way to say it because that sounds like egocentric, but I just, I feel strong, like really potent and strong. Um, and that being said, uh, I know shit is crazy in the world right now. Um, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of people are struggling. There are aspects of what, what's happening that I struggle with. Like I'm, you know, certainly not a superhuman. But that being said, there was a, a shifting point during Lionsgate where I felt the low energy, low vibration, like element of being stuck. I felt that shift and I felt a really profound, just spiritual rage. <laughs> it's just a great way to describe it. And I know that a lot of people will talk about like celestial events and they'll say like, I really felt it. And I'm, you know, I'm a witch, but I'm a pretty skeptical person, which I know to some people that sounds like an oxymoron, but it is what it is. Um, and so usually when people, especially people who, you know, make content for a living or whatever, when they talk about really feeling a celestial event, I tend to be kind of skeptical because it's, it seems like, you know, every, every so often these people are having dramatic energetic shifts and revelations. And I'm like, at a certain point, like, are you really? And so, you know, I completely understand if some of you are listening to me talk about this and you're skeptical, uh, you kind of just have to take my word for it. But yeah, I mean, I, I felt something uh, on this past new moon. Um, 
And the interesting thing is, so tomorrow, tonight tomorrow, is a full moon. Uh, typically, in the past, around the time of a new moon is when I start to feel tired and more like introverted, um, more of the energy of the hermit. And then around the time of the full moon is when I start to get my energy back. And I felt a complete shift in those in that paradigm this time around. This past new moon hit me hard. Um, with just so intense manifestations, in intense um, dream time, you know, dream experiences, just vivid, intense dreams. I, um, I struggle with sleep paralysis, not regularly to the point where like I need a doctor, but uh, from time to time. And I, um, I had a very, very, very intense sleep paralysis experience uh, a couple nights ago. And it just feels, I, I feel like things have shifted, like things are different. And it's not really in a way that I can completely quantify or explain. Um, and I will be making a separate video, unless the cards pull it out of me in this one. But um, barring that, I will be making a separate video talking about the idea of uh, spiritual anger or anger in witchcraft, um, because it's something that I've started to lean into a little bit more. So very long-winded intro. Let's go ahead and pull some cards. So we're looking for messages from the Morrigan for the collective. If there's anything specific around like new moon energy, just lessons, wisdom that we're looking for at this time. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we've got the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups signals a time in your life that I'm going to refer to as emotionally maturing. You know that time in your life, usually for most people, not everyone, but for most people this usually happens in like your late teens, early 20s, when you start to shift into a mature adult and you learn how to set healthy boundaries, communicate effectively. Again, not the case for everyone, but there is this maturing process that humans go through. And so the message that I'm getting from this card for right now is that a lot of us need to get more honest with ourselves around the level of emotional maturity that we're working with. We're kind of in, you know, if you go on social media, you'll recognize this, but we're kind of in this collective awakening to trauma and, you know, mental illnesses and, and things that need to be worked through, through therapy, through, you know, um, shadow work, self-development, and that's great. But I also noticed this trend of when people realize that, you know, maybe their parents were toxic or maybe they were in a toxic relationship, they were in a relationship with someone who was abusive, there tends to be this energy of blaming is the wrong word. It's more of a lot of people, as soon as they realize that something bad or inappropriate was done to them in a relationship, there's this gut level reaction to want to protect your ego and to say, uh, you know, just using a common example, my parents were super toxic. So, you know, that's why I am the way I am. Or that's um, like, obviously I'm struggling with anxiety and depression because my parents were so horrible. Um, now, this is a fine line to walk because there are older generations who will say the whole, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and suck it up. And that's not what I'm saying. Um, but we've pendulum swung a little bit too far to the other side. Some of us, not all, uh, a little too far to the other side where it's become this blame game of look at all of these bad, toxic things that were done to me let me then use this as a justification for my behavior. Um, you know, this is very common in, all right, <laughs> I wasn't gonna talk about this, but okay. Um, I see this come up a lot, uh, it's on TikTok, which by the way, I can make a whole separate rant video about how fucking horrible TikTok is. Um, it's addicting, TikTok's addicting, but it's so bad. It's so, I can feel myself losing brain cells as I scroll through TikTok and I still can't stop. It's a thing. Um, but yeah, there's this uh, prevalent energy of like, I drink a bottle of wine on a random Tuesday because I have anxiety because my parents were toxic. 
do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know if I'm illustrating this appropriately, but it's just this justification for really bad habits. And the thing that I wasn't gonna talk about, but we might as well, is that I, I'm 27, so I'm, I'm not old, but I'm also not super young. I've kind of gotten to the point in my life where, um, yeah, I can't just drink a half a bottle of wine on a random Tuesday. Uh, I don't wanna, you know, be dramatic and say that I had a problem because, you know, certainly not. But I would argue that needing to have some sort of alcohol or some sort of, you know, mind altering substance, not medication, not prescribed medication, but you know what I'm talking about, that this compulsive need to have this um, on a daily basis or on a regular basis because we're bored, because we don't want to face our problems, because we need that escape. Uh, I definitely see this being a trend amongst millennials, young adults, um, this just this energy of like, you know, we're getting hit with this awakening of holy shit, like a lot of the stuff that we experienced was really toxic and really terrible, but then we're taking that to a level of, of complacency of, oh, well, I guess I'm just fucked. Or I see this one a lot too of, uh, you know, the world's on fire, so mine as well just drink a bottle of wine and pass out and look the morrigan i'm laughing because from an ego perspective i want to be like listen it's fine we all do it but from um from a the what the morrigan is telling me to say perspective stop just stop uh being self-destructive isn't cute it's not something to aspire towards. It's not something to brag about. Uh, you don't need to feel shame, you know, if someone's judging you or saying, you know, you're a bad person because you do these, have these bad habits. Uh, again, just sticking to my example, because you drink a bottle of wine on a random Tuesday. Um, if someone's shaming you for that, I mean, fuck that person. But that's not an attribute to brag about. It's not something like, you know, there's this whole millennial wine mom culture of like, there are t-shirts that say like wine lover. And like, th there's a difference between enjoying the way something tastes and like needing to get bombed because you're unhappy. Um, and we all know, we all gotta draw that line for ourselves. This is, isn't me saying, hey, if you drink wine, you suck. This is more of, and again, this is such a narrow example. This is more of, I just, I see a lot a frequency of being proud of our bad habits instead of rolling up our sleeves and doing the hard work to change it. Um, and I think that we have this aversion to that because our parents and previous generations have said, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. It's very patronizing. It's very annoying. It's very one dimensional. It doesn't take into account how emotions function. Um, so yeah, the hard work that I'm talking about isn't like just suck it up and go have a career. Um, the hard work that I'm talking about is like go to therapy and like d do shadow work and like tell yourself no. Um, and to go back to using my own life as an example, when I dedicated myself to the Morgan as her priestess, which by the way is something that I did fairly recently, a couple of months ago, when I took that pledge, um, in my contract with her uh, is the stipulation that I will take care of myself, both mentally, spiritually, and physically. And a part of that was this realization and this communication with her where she was like, you have to stop drinking this much. So the agreement that I have with her is that on special occasions and when I go out to places socially, because I'm super fucking socially awkward. I need a couple of drinks or I'm not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> Autism problems. But, um, so yeah, I, I I don't just drink on a Tuesday anymore. And it sucked. Like, I, I, uh, I'm a 27 year old adult. I experienced stress and anxiety and frustration. And yeah, for a while, I was pouring myself a pretty hefty glass of wine every night to cope with that. And uh, again, not taking it to the point of alcoholism, my body was fine, like I was okay, um, but that's not a healthy way to cope. And the Morrigan has made it very clear to me to tie it back to the Knight of Cups and this emotional maturity and this understanding that we're going to have to do things we don't wanna do if your ultimate goal is to be the best version of yourself. 
and I'm not taking this to like a wellness influencer level of like drink lemon water every day and do yoga. I'm just saying like, honestly, like be honest with yourself. What do you want? Do you want to feel better? Do you want to get better? Do you want to be okay from a place mentally? Or do you just want to stay stuck where you are? Um, and if you want to change, if you want to improve, whatever your definition of improvement is, yeah, you're going to have to do some things you don't like. There's just this weird pendulum swing happening where, like I said, previous generations were like, the more you can suffer, the better. And then the millennials were like, we should never have to experience discomfort. And it's like, oh, it's neither one of those two. It's somewhere in the middle where you do things you don't like doing so that you can be okay. Um, but not all the time because we're not martyrs for the cause of taking care of ourselves. Like that's an oxymoron. So um, yeah, very much now is the time to get very, very real with yourself. And I don't remember if I said this in one of my previous videos or if it's just something that I was thinking about, um, but I really firmly believe that if your spiritual practice, that if your relationship with your deity doesn't challenge you, never makes you question what you're doing, only confirms the things that you already wanted, um, might not be a real relationship. Like I hate to, I hate to take it to that level, but um, the point of, of engaging in a spiritual practice is that there's an element of growth. And uh, growth does require discomfort at times. And um, yeah, I certainly, when I first started dipping my toes into witchcraft and I did not have a, a firm relationship with a, any sort of deity, there was definitely a lot of confirmation bias happening where I very clearly wanted something and so I kind of just molded my practice to you know, confirm what I already wanted. And when I started working with the Morgan is when I realized, no, <laughs> can't do that anymore. So again, it's up to you. You gotta decide what you want. Do you want improvement? Do you wanna stay stagnant? No judgment either way. You gotta make your own choices, but just be willing and be ready to, to do things that you don't necessarily immediately want to do. And by the way, I should also mention, um, yeah, there was a period where I was like, I want a glass of wine and she was like, you can't. I'm past that. Like, I don't, like I, I'm fine. 99% of the time I don't think about that. Like if I have a really stressful day at work, um, then maybe I'm like, ah oh, shit, I wish I could have wine right now. But then I just, as corny and ridiculous as it sounds, then I just do a meditation or go for a walk or do literally anything else and I'm fine. Uh, so yeah, there was a growing pain where I was like, shit, I'm so used to being tipsy at night. What do I do? And then you just get past that and then you're fine. All right, let's go ahead and uh, also, it's funny that was the Knight of Cups. It's literally like a, a wine chalice. This isn't all about wine, by the way. I should, I just want to make sure that uh, that's clear that it can be any bad habit, just using myself as an example. Um, all right, let's go ahead and grab another card. Okay, we got two. Okay, so the two cards that came flying out at me are the two of wands and the seven of pentacles. So speaking of topics that I did not anticipate covering nor do what I really want to. Okay, so I've mentioned this a couple of times on my channel. I am not a love and light witch. I, while I completely agree with the idea that we create our own reality and therefore what we focus on, we manifest more of, I am also very adamant about recognizing reality and coming to terms with what is physically happening. Um, I know that it is popular in spiritual circles among spiritual people to when something bad is happening, just focus on the version of reality that you want. And while I can see the merit in that, um, that's not my path. That's not how my relationship with the Morrigan functions. It feels irresponsible to me. It's just, it's not, it's not my jam. So we need to have a conversation about <laughs> climate change. Certainly not the science of climate change. That's not what we're doing here. But um, the reality of the situation that we're in is what we need to talk about. So with this two of wands, um, I can very clearly see, I mean, you can see 
the world right there and you can see fire and you can see water and there is this element with the two of wands of of this crossroads energy of this two possible outcomes and we're in the moment in time where we're choosing which outcome we're ultimately going to manifest this is something that's been coming up a lot for me in my relationship with the morrigan in fact i just did a full celtic cross spread for myself the other day i was pulling cards and i had 10 fly out at me laid them out in a celtic cross and it was it was very clear there was a lot of major arcana cards it was very very obvious to me that the morrigan is telling me that we are in a time of preparation now not in a time of panic not in a time of fear mongering not in a time of existential dread although i can understand existential dread i experience it often um but that's not the ultimate energy of what we're looking at right now the ultimate energy of what we're looking at right now is a realization that although we have control over ourselves and our own realities we do not have infinite control over every single thing that happens on this planet and the reality of climate change having a very negative impact on our species is a given at this point and so we are in a time where because we are spiritual people and because we have well in my case a relationship with a goddess who is very clearly telling me hey fucking start preparing um we're being given a heads up here we're in we're in that point in time where 10 20 years from now we're going to be looking back at today and i am trying to live my life in a way where when i look back at today i don't think shit i wish i would have done x y and z shit i wish i would have learned how to do this that or the other thing i keep getting the card of strength keeps coming back so i've you know just practically i've been working on building physical strength um i used to be a bodybuilder back in the day I'm gonna be honest don't give a shit what i look like anymore uh it's purely a strength thing for me at this point i've started lifting again started just working on building up endurance um again nothing cosmetic just like for for practicality purposes the card of strength keeps coming up for me as i mentioned it's not just physical strength it's also spiritual strength mental strength so to go back to an example i just had a few minutes ago um when i keep sitting and scrolling through TikTok, even though i can feel it melting the last of my brain cells um i need to stop doing that this is not a time in human history where we can just be wasteful with our days um again not not to bring about panic or chaos or oh shit like what you rearrange my life in this dramatic chaotic way but it means having the mental and spiritual strength to say hey um sitting on the couch scrolling through tiktok isn't it's not helping me like i'm not i'm not improving from this i'm not gaining strength from this i'm not learning anything from this so so maybe i stop and go to my altar and, and work on my practice or go for a walk or do literally anything more productive and again i know this can be taken to a neurotic level where you become obsessed with being productive every waking moment of your time uh obviously i'm not advocating for that um you have to determine for yourself what your skills and talents are what you're gifted at and then build upon that because we're looking at of, of realistically we're looking at an existence where we need to be much more physically and mentally capable of coping and having endurance endurance is a big word that keeps coming up for me and also endurance makes sense if you think about it in the context of just like the craziness of the world right i keep cycling back and forth between like i said existential dread where i watch the news and everything feels so big and chaotic and on fire and i don't know what to do and it's I keep going between that and then realizing like i haven't left my apartment in like seven days and i'm fine like i don't need to be panicking so it's like this pendulum swing back and forth between like crisis but also i'm okay right now so like i just and i'm landing somewhere again somewhere in the middle where what's happening in the world again not to be a fearmonger but what's happening in the world is a warning 
It is a knocking on our door, being like, hey guys, um, not gonna be getting better. So build up some endurance. But at the same time, a lot of us are in a space where our immediate safety is not necessarily compromised. Now, certainly that's not true for everyone. Um, there's a lot of horrific shit happening throughout the entire world. But for those of us who find ourselves currently physically okay, but we're also observing all of the horrible things that are happening in the world around us, now is our time to utilize the time and safety that we have to build strength and knowledge and endurance because we are very much in that crossroads energy. Yeah, I would just, I'm, I'm doing you all a disservice if I don't say this because we are from spirit, from our gods, from whatever you want to call it, we're being given an opportunity, a warning, a chance um, to say, look, we could still pull through this. And when I say that, I mean, our species could still exist but it's not gonna be pretty. And um, I think a lot of us kind of have this movie-esque understanding of a doomsday situation where we think we're gonna be standing on the beach and like a giant tidal wave is just gonna come crashing at us and we'll just be dead. And for a lot of people, probably, but for a lot of other people, it's just gonna be, <clears throat> again, I don't wanna speak it into existence, but, uh, a lot of us are going to live, but the civilization that we are used to will not. And so do with that information what you will. Uh, if you're someone who <laughs> couldn't imagine going camping, um, just, you know, slowly start to get used to the idea because, uh, you know, I'll call myself out. I'm a big air conditioning person. Uh, we lost power a couple weeks ago and I didn't have AC overnight and holy shit, uh, wasn't pretty, didn't sleep, was in agony. I run hot, I sweat a lot, so <laughs> just trying to get myself used to the idea of like not having air conditioning or like power. <laughs> so it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but I don't want to look back at this point and be like, shit, I wish I would have you know, prepared. Now, I do want to talk about this Seven of Pentacles because this came up. So I, I do a lot of readings about um, climate change and about the fate of humanity. And I keep most of that to myself, but um, you know, this is undeniable. I mean, this card keeps coming up for me. Um, where when I, I draw cards about climate change, it's always a card that indicates the crossroads. And then I ask, well, what are the two potential outcomes? And this is one of the cards that keeps coming up for me. And what this card represents to me is kind of hoarding energy, right? Remember at the beginning of the pandemic when everyone started hoarding toilet paper, this card gives me the energy of like every man for himself, like everyone take care of themselves and their family and just good luck. It's kind of like almost the worst case scenario where we see a complete and utter collapse of humanity. Um, you know, to take it back to a video that I did, you know, several months ago at this point, talking about five dimensional consciousness. Um, this is the outcome that does not reflect five dimensional consciousness. This is the outcome where we as a collective essentially go, we're giving up. And um, so it's kind of like the darkest timeline because we still very much have a chance, right? Um, and again, I, I, I don't want to dance around the topic. Um, I, I don't think it's possible for us to do something that completely makes everything okay. I think no matter what, we are looking at some sort of really catastrophic situation. But certainly within how we respond to those catastrophic situations. We have a chance to usher in five dimensional consciousness, love consciousness, empathy consciousness, or we have a chance to go the opposite direction and just give up essentially and have it be an absolute shit show. So like to be blunt, I think this card coming up right now is an indication that everything we're doing, I hate to say it, but everything we're doing as a collective is pushing us closer and closer to this potential outcome. If you look at something as simple, not really simple concept, but if something as simple as 
um, the vaccine, right? The way we're treating one another, the way the vaccinated are judging the unvaccinated, the way the unvaccinated are judging the vaccinated, and not just judging, it, it goes beyond that. There's vitriol, hatred. You know, there's a lot of people that, frankly, I used to respect who have said things like, well, if you didn't get vaccinated, you just, you're going to die. And a horrible thing to say. Like, fuck off. By the way, I, I made a whole video on this. This is the last video that I posted. I, I am vaccinated um, for personal reasons. Like, it's no one's business. But yeah, so, and uh, yes, I do think that getting the vaccine is the smartest decision for, like, most people. But regardless, like, how we handle that disagreement is so indicative of where we're headed as a collective. Like, <laughs> we keep being given chance after chance after chance and a lot of this is going to be american centric i'm american so i know we tend to just kind of think we're the center of the universe um but yeah i mean trump was a chance for us to go oh uh guys let's not like we were being he was a test frank not a test but like a a way for us to choose five dimensional conscious okay yeah it's a fucking it was a fucking test it was a test for us to go uh i don't think we should do this like i don't think we should hate each other this much or create this division and by the way i don't mean like if you voted for trump you were anti it, this is very nuanced uh, I'm, when I say Trump was this test, I mean the very idea of him, like the way the media reacted to him, the way the left reacted to him, just him as a, as a whole energy uh, was a chance for us to look ourselves in the mirror and be like, oh, we suck. Let's stop sucking. Um, and we didn't do that. Uh, we just made it worse. And then coronavirus was another opportunity for us to uh, come together, you know, usher in five dimensional consciousness, love consciousness, empathy consciousness. And what did we do? We ripped each other apart on the internet for sport. So yeah, I mean, and then, you know, the vaccine rolls out, that's another chance. Are we gonna be respectful? Are we gonna have disagreements, but learn how to, you know, speak to each other like adults? No, that's, not what we're doing, apparently. So, yeah. Again, not a love and light witch, not a love and light person in general. So, um, <clears throat> I get I'm not being trendy right now. I'm also not trying to fear monger. I'm kind of just trying to call it like I see it. Um, <clears throat> again, with the purpose of saying all of this to let you know that you still have plenty of time. Well, first of all, we all have time to make a different choice. Well, we're leaning towards this choice. We're leaning towards the um, the world's gonna burn and we're just gonna every man for themselves and just fuck everyone. And I say this frequently, but it bears repeating. If you're listening to me say all of this and your gut reaction is, oh, well, I don't do that. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> If you're alive right now, you're contributing to this. And in fact, if you're someone who's very adamant that you're not a part of the problem, you're probably a much, much bigger part of the problem than a lot of people are. Uh, because step number one is self-awareness. And again, if you are alive right now, you are a part of the collective consciousness, which means everything that is happening in your worldview is a reflection of who you are and what you're doing. So uh, if all you see is the world on fire, you're contributing to it. Sorry, so am I, so are we all. That's how collective consciousness works. Now, certainly some people contribute to it way more than others. Uh, I'm not gonna argue with that idea, but um, yeah, if your gut reaction to everything I'm saying is, well, it's a good thing that I'm 5D. No, you're not. No, you're not. Otherwise, you wouldn't be alive right now. I think that really our only hope of pulling through this, our only hope of not ending up on the darkest timeline is if we all get really fucking real with ourselves and realize just how much a part of the problem we are and then do something about it. Other than that, the advice is start preparing. You know, learn how to grow your own food. Start building physical strength. Um, yeah, it's, it's 
looking more and more likely as the days tick by that life as we know it currently isn't gonna last for much longer. I'm sorry. I know, I'm not gonna apologize, but I know this is dark. Um, and sometimes when I watch videos where people are talking about this, my main takeaway is like, oh fuck. And again, I wanna, I'm being a little witty and sarcastic because that's kind of just my personality. And you know, I'm, I very much identify with the millennial existential dread. Like it's kind of funny and like, I get it. Um, also it's, you know, not funny, but, but really to change the tone of this for just a second, what I want you to walk away from this video with is kind of hope, at least re a realization that you are in a point in time where you still have time to prepare. You still have time to be okay. You need to determine what work you need to do and um, you know, don't be too hard on yourself to the point of exhaustion and burnout, but push yourself do some shadow work and i mean a lot of shadow work um because also the more shadow work you do the better the collective becomes in terms of not ending up in the darkest timeline so yeah um prepare and also prepare in a physical sense right we talk a lot about spirituality and shadow work and that's great and please do that but also prepare in a physical sense like straight up the, the morgan doesn't care how good you look how thin or strong or muscular you it, it's not about looks it's about can you survive you know what can you protect yourself and your family there is definitely an element of of preparing for battle um again not taking to it not taking that to an extreme but yeah that energy is there that energy of building strength is there so if you are someone who is interested in weightlifting go for it like now is the time and also like full transparency it can be pretty fucking motivating to to start an exercise or a workout regime and be like I'm preparing for battle like I think sometimes I think I'm more of a badass in my head than I actually am um but who cares like I'm having fun I'm enjoying it like find something to enjoy in this process right like maybe your pre preparation is like you love plants like you're really good at keeping plants alive yeah, I got news for you. We're not gonna have grocery stores in this doomsday scenario. So like learning how to grow food is gonna be pretty fucking important, not just for you, but for your community or however we end up doing that. Um, so yeah, maybe your version of preparing for this is learning how to grow food and like practicing in, in whatever way you can. Um, you know, maybe you're a very gifted healer and you start learning more about herbs and, and medicinal qualities because again, doomsday scenario we're not gonna have access to these things so yeah like find the thing that you're passionate about that brings you an element of joy and then get good at it because we're gonna need you all right guys that is all i got again i know it's heavy i have to be real like i just have to i don't have another choice if i if i if i don't say what she wants me to say she will make me get sick again and i can't i can't keep getting sick because i'm ignoring her so um, I, ha I have to talk about this. Um, but again, it's not a fear mongering thing. Like don't walk away from this being more scared, right? Um, maybe, maybe if you thought everything was gonna be okay, maybe now you have a moment of reflection and you go, oh, fuck, it's not gonna be okay, is it? But, you know, but, but then do something with that. Don't get stuck in existential dread for too long. All right guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you in the next one.